Let's do the fundamental theorem of calculus on this. X plus 2. Let's write that down. X plus 2. Now, fundamental theorem of calculus says this, right? What you're doing is, I'm going to give you a quick little intro on it. We have a video on there. If you do calculus into intro fundamental theorem and whatnot, it'll pop up because we did a live stream on this, right? So basically, you're doing this. If you have a function, right? What you want to do is you want to, let's say this is your function. Let's say that's your function. You want to find the slope of a certain point, right? The rate of change at that point. So what you do is you zoom in, narrow down on that point. So you first you find the slope between two, two points, and then you come closer, 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 you do this, right? And the fundamental theorem of calculus says this. If you have a function f of x and you want to take the limit, let me write down the limit. Oh man, I gotta find the dude. Let me find the proper terminology. I'm gonna write it down and see if I have any uh, mistakes on it. So you want to find uh, uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches a certain number, h, let's say, right? I think it's h. Then what you do is you go f of x plus h, oops, h minus f of x over h, right? I think that's what it is. Right. Ice and snow storm here in southern LP of Minnesota. Yes, yes, sir. I came here on vacation with my wife and realized, wow, we have to live here. I was originally born in the southern part of Italy, so I have the beach in my blood. Ah, nice. Went on vacation and decided to stay. That's cool. Or you must have come back and organized things and then came back again, right? Given the all liver break. Eh? Yes, thanks. This is what I was referencing. Yeah, okay, awesome, Marco. We do. I think it should be limit as H approaches zero. Oh, as H approaches zero. That's right. Thanks, Dice Power. My bad. So this is limit as h approaches zero. And we're going to put down is equal to limit as h approaches zero. And this is the derivative f of x limit. Do I have that right? Do we put the limit on this side? Seriously. <laughs> this, we do this, right? f of x prime, the derivative is limit as h approaches zero, right? Pitra, how are you doing? Hello, hello, Chicho. I think some of your neighbors might be vampires. <laughs> how come? Why? <laughs> I love your type of stream. Awesome. Awesome, Pitra. Love doing it, right? So take a look at this thing. What's the restriction we have in mathematics? What was the restriction we had in mathematics? The restriction we had in mathematics is we can't divide by zero. So if h approaches zero, if we set h is equal to zero, we can't do that because then we're dividing by zero. Oh, how do we deal with this? Well, we substitute in what we have here, right? Yes, yes, I did return. I was originally a police detective in Italy, so it took some time to get off the grid back home. Oh man, a great decision getting out of the uh, policing to go into Jamaica, live off the land. It was so much better. I'm Italian, but I want to hear you. So take a look at this thing. And welcome Italy, by the way. Salutations. Right. So let's do this. When you're doing this, do this, right? And this basically means, and by the way, gang, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. Appreciate them. And the bits and the donations and the tokens and all that jazz, right? So f of x plus h means just substitute x plus h for here, right? So what we're going to do is, hopefully I have enough room because this gets messy, okay? Whoa, guy, how are you doing? Chicho, hey, Cholo, I didn't know you do math, homies. Oh, of course, orale. <laughs> Carnal. <laughs> Autograph if you are 
on the x-axis x is zero right on the graph if you're on the x-axis uh, no y is zero on a graph if you're on the x-axis y is zero and if you're on y y is zero. no 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 the other way around if you're on a on a graph x and f of x or if you want to call this y right if you're here this is y is equal to zero that's y is one y is two y is negative one y is negative two so y is zero and focus 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 right and the other way around right it's a common mistake by the way it's a common mistake okay. it just feels like you want to say x is zero but it's not it's y is zero right so substitute this in for x right so f of i'm just going to do it here and then we're going to erase it so we're basically we're doing f of x plus h well f of x plus h just means substitute this in for x so that becomes 1 over x plus h plus 2. You're okay with that? This is some breaking bad math. Reminds me of Eisenberg. Eisenberg. I don't make the blue stuff, though. Chicho, honestly, I highly uh, recommend this to anybody, despite of their social status or age. I have never been this happy in my life. I've had so much more time to focus on my relationship with my partner and certain parts of me as an exam as an example my skin have become so clear and how oh brother I doubt it not I seriously uh, I believe you I believe you everybody has to get out of a rat race and one of the ways you get out of a rat race is learn mathematics right like the number line indeed right so let's plug that in so that becomes f of x plus h is 1 over let me write this down oh we've got to do the limit i got to write down the limit too right we can't forget this part limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over x plus h plus 2 minus 1 over and that's just f of x x plus 2 all over h right Oh, what do we do now we can't we still can't set h is equal to zero because we get a division by zero well crunch 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 add these two fractions how do we add these two fractions well we've got to find a common denominator common denominator is x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2 right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this limit as h approaches 0 I'm gonna do division over here divided by h right because i'm going to do this part so common denominator for adding these two guys and it's just adding fractions right is x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. well what did you multiply this by to give you this well you multiply by x plus 2 so you multiply top by x plus 2 so that just becomes 1 times x plus 2 which is x plus 2 minus what did you multiply x plus 2 by to give you this you multiply by x plus h plus 2 right so you go minus 1 times that x plus h plus 2 right put that yeah it's nice nobody bothers me my bills are dirt cheap I have garden everything is local I buy my meat at a local farm and I can see the animals and food I am eating when they are alive I've never used a barbecue so much nice nice Von Dutchie been four years since I completed my math degree and I can maybe remember 30% of <laughs> brother me too I had to go back and relearn all this right this is the same type of stuff we did a while back yeah so expand this well this is just x plus 2 minus minus in front of bracket means you subtract all these right all the signs change minus x minus h minus 2 so we just instead of rewriting it I'm doing this right now we're gonna simplify this okay if we simplify this this becomes x minus x will that kill each other 2 minus 2 they kill each other so in top limit as h approaches 0 at the top we got negative h over 
x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2 divided by h means times 1 over h. Right? That's what it means. So, Chicho, what can you do with these math? I feel like this would be helpful for one uh, in the business, uh, for sure, in business and engineering and philosophy and uh, sociology and data analysis and like everywhere really uh have i do i use calculus in my daily life no but i do look at the rate of change i do look at graphs to see to get a visual of how function behaves right over time and then you can do the calculus i.e doing the calculus means looking into the future or looking into the past looking at the rate of change to see how a system behaves so it's really analyzing systems right just doing these sort of problems elevates your mind it shows your ability to think yeah and it's problem solving it it's critical thought is and you're you're able to if you know mathematics really here's one thing i tell everybody when you know math like it can't do harm first of all if you know something you learn mathematics it's not going to do damage like it's one of the few things when you acquire knowledge over a certain thing it's not going to or a tool it can only benefit you right but one thing mathematics does it allows you to see bs coming a mile away right when people start throwing numbers at you and stuff like this you can you can do the calculus you can do the mathematics and go hey wait a second those numbers don't make sense right so it's a great bs detector right so it prevents you from falling for propaganda very important cool what is your current occupation my friend you seem like an interest i i i do i create content online and i've been teaching mathematics for like 20 years privately i can't function in an institution uh, i figured that one out long time ago right <laughs> i would get fired or uh, i would i would not be happy so i sort of do did what you did i took myself off the grid but i like i i don't mind living uh i love living here actually Temp living in a rainforest for me is be beautiful right i love the greenery right okay all computers use a system of open close zero and one to make a graph computers yeah until we get quantum computing right big o notation is the efficiency of the graph made by the data so take a look at this thing we're multiplying fractions number one rule for multiplying fractions reduce before you multiply so take a look at this thing a little tangent right what if we had this 25 over 15 times 28 over 36 times 18 over 14 times i don't know 9 over 15 right how do you simplify this how do you multiply this well if you're multiplying fractions I, i've had people do this i go okay multiply these guys multiply 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 what is this equal to i've had students take a calculator when they first start working with and they start punching in numbers and I let them do this by the way they punch in numbers this times this times this times this and they get one gigantic number right they got a gigantic number and then they go this times this times this times this and they get another gigantic number and then they go okay that's the answer they tell me I go well you can't leave it like that you gotta simplify it, reduce it and then they try to reduce this fraction to a smaller form right and I let them do this and they do this I go okay uh, do you think there's an easier way to do this they go like well I just use a calculator I just do this I go well here's another easier way simplify before you multiply my government failed calculus I'm sure <laughs> that would have simplify before you multiply anything from the top can kill anything from the bottom right as long as there's no plus and minus between them five goes into 25 five times five goes into 15 three times three goes into nine three times three goes into 15 five times five kills five 14 goes into 28 twice six goes into 36 six times six goes into 18 three times two goes into six three times three kills three oh the answer is one one that's cool 
answer is one isn't that a lot easier than multiplying the numbers and then trying to figure out what they are afterwards you have to simplify the fraction first right so keep that in mind right well we got negative h over this times one over h h kills h so we got negative one up top we got rid of an h what can we do now well what we can do is multiply this out right yes chicho but now solve for the napkin ring paradox type like now what you can do is foil this out or you got limit as h approaches zero right of negative one over x plus h plus two times x plus two well now it's just you can just sub in h is equal to zero because you you're not going to get a division by zero so if you sub in h is equal to zero this is what you get negative one over x plus two times x plus two which is really equal to negative one over x squared plus 4x plus 4. So as for this function, as f of f of x as h approach for the limit of h approaches zero of this thing, that's your function, your uh, equation of the tangent for this function, right? Now, does that make sense? So if you want to find out what the tangent line is for any point of x, you just plug it in. So here, let's find out what f of 0 is. So f of 0 is going to be 1 over 2. Because you sub an x is equal to 0, you got 1 over 2. What's the slope of the graph at x is equal to zero well you just plug it in because what we have is our function here now is f prime of x the derivative the derivative of this function is negative one over x squared plus four x plus four right so f prime of zero the slope of this function at x is equal to zero you just plug in zero here so it becomes one negative one over zero squared plus four times zero plus four it's just negative one over four negative one over four that's the slope of the function at x is equal to zero right let's see you'll be ready also make it ring o in big O notation. Does, is that okay? I hope that answered your question, uh, Marco.